couldn't stand this every day, buried in the 810, almost every day of your life spent like this, in some dreary office, then the five-something back home again. Not very bright. Look at them. Every Friday, one says, I have the responsibility of collecting 8,000 pounds from the bank. Every Friday. There's a life for you. Now, if I was a crook, and let's face it, there's none of us perfect, you might call me lucky to be on this particular train. But you're wrong. Look, every Friday at the same time, he picks up 8,000 quid. Now, supposing I hadn't heard that on the train. It might make a difference to me personally, but he'd still be in the running for a nasty surprise. Why? Because I'm many a person with wicked intentions. I could be anyone. I could be the bloke who also goes to the bank every Friday. I could be the shopkeeper across the road who sees him, regular as clockwork. It's his regularity that's so inviting. The same bank, the same day, the same time. I could be anyone who's seen him, or anyone who's heard him talk. Anyone, that's me. Anyone, that is, who's anxious to show him the folly of his ways. And that's no more difficult than being near the right bank, on the right day, at the right time. works alone. He's a small fry, but he makes a living, quite a good living, sort of national assistance really. Wherever he goes, he always finds someone ready to give him a few quid, and in a day, he gets round quite a bit. Between you and me, he's a typewriter mechanic at present. Mark you, he knows nothing about typewriters. The point is, no one else knows he knows nothing about typewriters, and no one else is likely to find out. It must be a breach of British etiquette to ask to see a man's credentials. Anyway, no one's ever asked him, and I'll be surprised if anyone does this time. Goodbye, says he. Thanks for your help. Like taking sweets from a baby. It's exactly the same in any shopping centre. You can't see him. Oh, don't worry, he's around somewhere. Oh, but of course, you never worry, do you? Honestly, I think I'd made a mistake if my missus behaved like some women. Of course, I know what part of the trouble is. Shopping's so much faster these days. And there's usually someone waiting behind you. You're always a bit afraid you'll cause delay. The trouble is, you're not afraid of the right things. She could be afraid she won't get any more housekeeping money. She could be afraid little Oswald won't pass his 11 plus. She could be afraid she's been shortchanged, afraid to check up in case she looks silly. But she's not afraid to trust any nimble-fingered villain who spends his life hoping for luck like that. And there he is. I've said it before and I'll say it again, like taking sweets from a baby. Here, I don't know why I'm going on like this. After all, people like her do keep the police nice and busy. It's not the money, it's the keys, he fancies. I'm not saying he won't keep the money, mind, but there's far more reward in following her to find out where she lives. Then he can return, you see, and enter in a dignified fashion. What do you mean she might change the lock, would you? When I nod my head, you pause. Here's a happy family. 
Must be a good program. A bit noisy for my taste, mind, but I know plenty who like them that way. They say there's no honor among thieves, so I may as well tell you a few things. Pleasant things like, have you ever thought that your favorite program could be enjoyed by people who've never seen it? By people who enjoy your enjoyment to the extent that during the commercials, they wish you didn't have to get up and make a cup of tea? Kind, aren't they? But so are you. You often leave a window open while you're viewing. Maybe to let the cat in. Believe me, with a good TV show to cover the noise, it's not always the cat that's wandering about. He's quite an actor, this character. I've seen him do this meter reading stunt before. It's very funny. Unless, of course, you're on the receiving end, or a copper with a notebook full of cases like this. It's another example of how nobody asks for credentials. The lady of the house comes to the door and, good morning, he says, I've come to read the meter. This is where the acting comes in. Madam, he says, would you mind going upstairs and switching on the lights and staying there till I call you? Like taking sweets. You know the rest. Here's a word of warning I'll gladly give. Old people don't deserve to be conned. There's enough mugs around, as you've seen, without bothering them. And if you're not so young, if you're alone, get a chain fitted on your door. No one's laughing when this happens, particularly as it encourages people to be good citizens and call the police. Oh yes, the police love people like her. Good thing there's not more about. Well, I reckon we won't see him for a while. As for the man who had the responsibility of collecting 8,000 pounds every Friday, maybe his name in the paper will show him some sense. It's funny, but if everyone showed a bit of sense, you might find me on the 810 every morning. <laughs> Take a revolution, that would. Whose crime is it, anyway? <laughs>